The Boundary Supply Errand is a great backpack, but I had some mixed feelings about it. You can watch the video in the info tab above or the description below. But now Boundary Supply made a pro version of the Errand that looks like a mix of the Primer system and the Errand. This is the unboxing and first impressions of this new Errand Pro. Alright, so this is the unboxing and first impressions of the new Boundary Supply backpack. Just as a heads up, if you don't know, with all of my first impressions and unboxings, I feel it is very important for me not to inform myself about the product in advance to give you the most honest first impressions as if I would walk into a brick and mortar store and check out the product for the very first time. And with that out of the way, let's unbox this Boundary Supply backpack. First and foremost, I have to say the packaging is amazing. And what I noticed when this package arrived, this is fairly heavy. So I am looking forward to see what's inside. There is a little pull tab here, which is definitely a cool experience by itself. Usually all of these bags come in just regular card boxes, but this is definitely something new. I was actually expecting to cut it open with this new James brand knife, but I don't need to. So let's open it up. And this has kind of like an opening like in a Ziploc bag. So you can basically reuse this packaging as a dust bag, for instance. So this is already really cool. All right, so let's see what's all inside. Okay, that's quite a lot of stuff. And what I like right away, these dust bags are amazing. I like this print. They are reusable. You have zippers here. So you actually could use these dust bags, this packaging for packing cubes, actually, if you're traveling. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different packages. If you have seen my Boundary Supply Primer System backpack, that was a modular system as well. And I really liked the modularity of that bag. Then came the Boundary Supply Aaron, which overall, in terms of feature set, in terms of build quality, design, I did like, but I felt like it was too small than it was advertised. And there were a couple of features like the magnetic laptop slot that I didn't like on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm really looking forward to see how this new Boundary Supply Aaron Pro Pack maybe or potentially combines the positive aspects of the primer system with some of the positive aspects of the errand and potentially solves some of the issues that I had with the errand backpack. Before we go into the bag, let's just quickly look into these smaller things. Here we have the premium chest strap. Usually I don't need a chest strap, but on a motorcycle chest straps are actually quite beneficial. And what we have here is a hook-in system with these metal attachment points and a V-buckle fit lock. I prefer V-buckle fit locks just for uh, the reason them being very secure compared to other fit locks where you can accidentally bump against them and potentially lose those um, fit locks. What I like is that they actually included an extra mounting point on the other side, which is cool. I'm not really sure why there is an extra one because this one has a screw while the other one doesn't. Not sure why that is. So next one is the dividing floor. So not sure what this is for yet, but I assume you can put that into the main bag. All right, so let's look at this modular shoulder straps. Interesting. So these are a slimmer form of shoulder straps. Let's see what these are for later on. They aren't that padded. I assume that those might be for using it with a camera case. So this is the camera case. Okay, wow, that's pretty beefy. So let me just try to figure this out. I assume that you can use this camera cube 
as a standalone backpack. Attach those shoulder straps on these lashing points and use that as a backpack. And I do like this design because with a primer you could actually put that camera cube inside and then have a side access to your camera on the side without having to open up the whole bag completely. And what I do like about this right now is you have two different openings. One which is at the back of your bag. It's clamshell style and you can get to your camera this way or you open it up from this side and have like a big main compartment clamshell style opening to get to all of your cameras. What I do like right away is this system here because with clamshell opening backpacks, especially when there is very expensive equipment inside, you always need to be very careful, especially if that expensive gear has some weight to it. If you don't close it up properly, the weight actually can like when you're walking bump against this side and slowly wiggle up the zippers or you have pickpockets that just open up the zipper and get to your stuff. But with this Velcro, which is, as you can hear, also very loud and secure, you can on one hand prevent that this will accidentally open by itself but also that no pickpockets will just open up the zipper and get to your stuff without you noticing. Because if this is on your back and someone will try to open up the zippers, that person needs to open up the Velcro first, which either can be loud or is just another step that that person has to go through just to pickpocket the items inside the bag while it is on your back. So I like this a lot. It also adds a little bit of a stylistic design to it. And you have a couple of these Velcro dividers so you can actually design the inside to fit your camera. You have another pocket here which is for SSDs, SD cards and smaller items. There are a couple of slots here to store your SD cards which is amazing. And yeah overall this feels very well padded and solid. The zippers are a little bit stiff, but I assume after some breaking in period, this will work very easy. And yeah, it feels solid. It has some heft to it due to all of the padding and the fabrics. It feels quite heavy. But if you have expensive equipment, you want it to be secure. Therefore, you have some padding here. Before we go into the main bag, here's the packaging with the premium divider wall. Okay, so this is something that you can put inside that has a few other compartments. Here's one with a few mesh slots and elastics. Then a pocket with a see -th almost see-through milky mesh and then another pocket which could be something like a shoe pocket maybe you have well it's at least a pocket for wet items that has Fit lock here to keep it in place if not in use, but this feels like some sort of waterproof, not waterproof, but at least let's say leak proof pocket. And um, so maybe if you have some wet clothing or something like that, I do like these kinds of organizer panels because usually with just drop in pocket, small items will slide down, accumulate at the bottom and it will be difficult to find stuff. With this, you can actually kind of organize it in a vertical way and not having all of that stuff bunch up at the bottom. Yeah, I assume this will be, this can be inserted into the main bag, which will we check out now. All right, so now to the main attraction, which is the Aaron Pro pack in the X-Pack edition Urban Gray. Wow, so this is the Aaron Pro. Right away, 
I like it a lot. I did like the errand. I feel like some people had the impression that I didn't like the errand at all, but I felt like the errand was a cool pack. It was just not for me. And especially, I think, I don't remember the exact capacity that it was advertised. It felt like many people, me included, thought like, okay, this was... I think it was like 20 liters capacity or something. A 20 liter capacity backpack. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it rather felt like a much smaller capacity bag. And there were a couple of things that I didn't like in terms of usability. But overall, it was a very good looking bag. A very well-made bag. It just wasn't for me. This now looks, as the name suggests, very pro. It is heavy from first impressions. It feels very substantial in weight and in heft and in bulkiness. And now comes maybe something that kind of is contradictory what I said about the errand because I felt like the errand was too small. And now from my very first impressions, I feel like this might be slightly too big for my personal day-to-day -day use. However, this is, and I assume that just by the name, is a pro bag. You're supposed to carry around your gear, your camera gear, or you're supposed to travel with that, but have like this kind of nomad life. So your computer and your clothing and stuff like that. That's what I assume at the moment. So it is totally fine that this is big. This being this heavy, I'm not sure if this would be a good carry on backpack. Based on the size, I would assume this is a good carry on backpack, but on the empty weight alone, not sure if flight regulations, this could get a little bit tricky. But again, I think this is more targeted towards the photography creator kind of demographic. Let's look around. So we have some waist belt that is quite slim. Most of you know that I don't like waist belts because they kind of get in my way when I'm walking around and I like to just remove them. So it's good to see that they are detachable. You have a pass through. The back panel is very well padded, very substantial. It, it feels that it will be very comfortable if you need to hike around with your heavy equipment. This air channel will keep your back a little bit ventilated. But in my humble opinion, most backpacks, if you're walking around with it, it doesn't matter if there is a, a channel in between, you will get sweaty on your back anyways. <laughs> but it's good to see that there is a, a air channel. The shoulder straps are very well padded, but feels, you know, there are a lot of shoulder straps that are very well padded, but feel kind of stiff and heavy in a way. But these are bulky, padded, and feel comfortable, but they don't feel that heavy and that stiff. It's kind of hard to describe, but usually when you have a lot of padding, again, it feels stiff. It feels that it is very comfortable, but it gets in your way. But this doesn't feel like it, which is very cool. Ah, and here you have a chest strap, which has the kind of fit locks that I personally dislike a lot because they are so easy to accidentally open. I hate is a strong word, so I don't want to say I hate them, but I really dislike these kind of fit locks. So it's good to see that there is an alternative premium chest strap that you can replace these with. You have some load lifters, which can be channeled through this part so they don't just dangle around. Personally, I don't need load lifters, but with a bag like this that can get very heavy, load lifters are a good idea. Still, yeah, I don't like these things like dangling around. And I'm a motorcycle rider, usually with load lifters, these strap ends always kind of hit my helmet. And then you have this clackering sound when you are riding around. I really dislike that a lot, but I can understand that a heavy bag like this will need some load lifters. You have some very basic strap and organizers, which are these elastics. Yeah, these are basic. I prefer different ones, but these are better than none. As dangling strap ends, yeah, they do annoy me a lot. 
to be quite honest. It's just a regular luggage pass through. You have a lot of lashing points here. Not really sure what these are for, but I assume that if you have, here's a bottle compartment that many people also use for tripods. So I can see that these lashing points maybe will be used to secure the tripod even further. You have this compression strap that will be used to secure the tripod. On the front, we have some more compression straps, unfortunately with some more strap ends, but here are some better strap end organizers. These are kind of like this rubbery feeling. I like them a lot. You have good hardware. I like these better than fit locks because they will keep stuff secure. Then we have a quick access compartment over here with just a big drop-in slot and then a slot with, it's not very soft, it kind of feels like jeans clothing. So, but it's still probably a good place for your phone if you don't want it to get scratched up. Before I go into the main compartment, let's check out the sides further. Then on the other side, we have Another quick access slot, which is great for smaller items like phone, wallet, keys, pens, stuff like that. Zipper garage, AquaGuard zippers, great to keep water outside. I always say I love these zipper garages because any fabric, any zipper that claims to be water resistant and um, I don't like to use the term waterproof because in my humble opinion nothing is waterproof. A fabric can be waterproof but depending on how long you are in the rain, how strong the winds are, like on the motorcycles for instance, in my humble opinion water can get pushed through seams eventually or if you're not careful enough and leave a small gap at the zippers open then water can get pushed inside. So having zipper garages really helps to make sure that no water gets inside. But granted, you need to be deliberate and park the zippers inside those zipper garages. So you have a cool side handle. I believe these are very important. I like side handles, especially with big bags. I'm not that tall. So whenever I carry around the bag just by the top handle and I need to walk up the stairs, I usually bump the bottom against the stairs because I'm not that tall. So having a side handle makes it much more comfortable and more balanced in a way to carry around a bag like this. Let's open up these awesome V-buckle style fit locks to see what we get here. So first and foremost, we have another pocket outside, which feels like a regular magazine pocket, which what some brands like to call them. For me, I feel like not that many people actually use magazines that much anymore. So this is just a cool quick access pocket for stuff that don't need a lot of protection because here is no padding, but you want to access quickly, maybe a jacket. Of course, you can add a tablet in here if you're on a flight and you want to access it quickly, but there is no, no padding, no protection from anyone bumping against that. So use that pocket with care. And it only has these Velcro closings. Then, you have this flap down opening access to the main compartment and with the normal errand i didn't like this opening that much it's okay it gives you in my humble opinion the false impression of making this somewhat of a roll top expandable opening but i feel like since this is not that rollable and flexible like a roll top opening you can expand it this will expand due to these expandable straps but still if if you add something in here it will look a little bit odd from my experience with other bags that this yeah, it doesn't like, it won't look that good if you want to use it like in an expandable kind of way, just because this flap down is a little bit rigid or stiff and doesn't flex like, like a roll top opening, you know? But just having this bigger opening and this quick opening, yeah, it makes loading and unloading stuff quicker and more easy. But I wouldn't say this is similar in terms of expandability like a roll top opening. So this is just a different way to get into your main compartment. 
But then obviously you also have the clamshell opening, which I personally prefer. Oh, okay, let's see. This is a little bit different than I was expecting because when I opened up this flap, I thought my hands were grabbing into this part, but it actually grabbed into this inside. Oh, I see. Okay, that makes much more sense. All right, so you have basically two compartments. With a clamshell opening, you open it up and you are inside this, let's call it admin area. You have your laptop slot with this fiddler. I dislike this so much because you see, this was just also a problem with the errand. This kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it is fiddly to open up. And you see this, it just, if you're like quick about it, it tends to sometimes close by themselves because it is a magnet. So yeah, it, it, it annoys me a little bit. You need something to keep the laptop in place. Yeah, maybe, no, <laughs> because it, it's inside here. It won't like just fall out or something. So I don't need this, especially this being so annoying. And it's not that, it's not that easy to open up. I, I really do dislike these fit locks but it is a good laptop compartment with this soft kind of it looks like jeans fabric but it isn't it is a little bit softer but not as soft as like these felt kind of inner linings you have a laptop slot with another magnetic closing then mesh pockets maybe for hard drives your charger and that's about it on this side everything is well padded then you get to this side, which has a slot here with a mesh inside and yeah, something like this. And here's Velcro. So remember this part. So what you can probably do is, or not probably, definitely do is remove this opening. Yeah, you see this? Remove that and upgrade this dividing wall to a much more premium one. So close the zippers here just like on the jacket. Wow, I like this a lot. Then the Velcros. Then we have a completely different dividing wall, which is much better, in my humble opinion, much more organized. I like this way better than this. But I can see if you don't need all of these slots, then this is enough. This is not bad, Just this is just a little bit better. But also keep in mind, if you want to upgrade this to this, this definitely has a little bit more weight to it. It's not much, it's not heavy, but all of these small grams, these additions of fabric, of zippers, will add weight to the already slightly heavy backpack. So keep that in mind, especially if you want to load camera gear. I feel like every single gram will add up very quickly. And then you have to kind of balance, okay, do I actually need all of these compartments and therefore more fabric? little bit more weight or do I just take this away just use this and those extra grams that I save are better invested in more batteries for instance so that's something always to keep in mind especially if you're getting older like I am <laughs> weight and every gram can be an issue and inside here you have a velcro bag so I assume you can just use dividing walls here or just attach this camera cube. You need to align. Yeah, here's the side axis. Here's it as well. So you can just, I will just do it quickly. Put that inside here. Let me see this. Now I already loosened these Velcros on the zippers. So having a somewhat of a modularity, you need to <laughs> Keep in mind that everything is detachable. And if you don't close it down properly, those things will detach by themselves. And what I noticed right away, there are a couple of different forms of hook and loop, AKA Velcro points. And I remember one bag that had these so-called whisper pods and they had this similar kind of Velcro and it's not that strong. This is already not, as strong as I would like. And I can already foresee that this will always open up by, by themselves. 
Yeah, that is already something that I don't like. Oh, damn. Yeah, and this zipper, this opens up. Not sure if you are intended to have this dividing wall inside whenever the camera cube is there, but this is already so full that this Velcro and this zipper open up by themselves all of the time. Hmm, not sure if I like that, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong and I'm... You see that? I can't, I can't close it. My camera cube is slightly too big right now. Maybe I've put it in the wrong way, not sure. Need to figure this out, but I can't close the zipper with the camera cube inside. Maybe this dividing wall is not supposed to be used in combination with the camera cube. Not 100% sure. I will need to check that. Need to figure this out, but that is kind of odd. So let's take out the camera cube. All right. So yeah, this is the Errant Backpack Pro version. And from first impressions, I like this a lot. This feels like a very solid and well-made backpack. That being said, it is a little bit heavy by itself. Also, you need to keep in mind, this is a modular backpack. And with that, I think it is a good combination of the boundary supply, but also the errand backpack. It takes all of the positive aspects of those two backpacks and combines it in this version. But with everything that is so modular, that wants a lot, you need to be very aware of that there will be some trade-offs. For instance, if you use all of these modules and add it all in this will get even more heavier than just by itself and will be more bulky will have some heft to it and as you have seen with the dividing wall because it is modular because you can detach attach stuff inside there will be the occasion that stuff just detaches by themselves or like i just notice I can't close it up again maybe I did something wrong this is just like doing it quickly and not with a lot of research but yeah those are the things you need to keep in mind and before you go all in and think like okay I buy the backpack with all of the modules really think hard about if you actually need them this this dividing wall is a very good example I do like this premium special pro um, dividing wall but i feel like this might be enough for most people especially if you add the camera cube inside this dividing wall will be enough yeah but that's about it all right this was a very long first impressions video but with all of these add-ons and details it isn't surprising i am impressed by the features and modularity of the Aaron pro the build quality and looks are great as well that being said all of this build quality and modularity comes with a trade-off the weight Using good fabrics, hardware and adding a lot of features e.g. pockets that will add zippers and more layers of fabrics just will add grams that result in a very noticeable empty weight. After recording this first impressions, I weighed the bag and it is slightly over 2 kilograms empty. Plus, if you add a module like the camera cube that by itself is also very well made and therefore has some weight, the bag will get even more heavy. This is something you really need to keep in mind before going all in and buy all modules and add-ons. Especially if you plan to use it as a carry-on bag, you need to make sure that the bag doesn't get heavier than what is allowed inside the plane. So for me personally, I probably won't use the premium divider, plus I would think really hard about if I would need the camera cube or if a smaller camera cube would be better suited. Obviously, if you need to carry a lot of expensive camera gear, then the camera cube is a no-brainer. However, please keep in mind that a completely filled camera cube plus the weight of the bag itself will get extremely exhausting on your bag no matter how comfortable the shoulder straps might be. But then again, you might be able to cancel your gym membership. Okay, this was my first impressions of the Boundary Supply Aaron Pro. What are your thoughts about this bag so far? 
let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions about this bag, also comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss the next videos. Also check out my Instagram and second channel at you know the bow. I see you in the next videos. Thank you very much.